Hi, my name is Catherine, and today's tune by ear is Johann Sebastian Bach's Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring. And the tune was inspired by my friend here. Um, I saw my little Johann Sebastian Bach doll sitting around, and I thought, ooh, we should do some of his music today. So I made a little arrangement that we can do. And um, it's in the key of C major, and it actually starts on the G string on the fourth finger once if we're in first position so i'm going to play it for you now and then we can talk about a few things that'll help make it easier to learn all right maybe i'll take my earring out here we go <laughs> So of course it's this big choral work that Bach wrote, but this is just a little bit of it and um, in a key that makes it lie nicely on the cello for us for learning. And um, so it's just a portion of that tune. So in terms of the left hand, um, of course the left hand is what's changing the pitches and um, it's, I think it's a nice tune to learn by ear because it has a lot of um, stepping around just like like you would do in a scale so notes um, going alphabetically or um, on the scale one after the other and then um, you can hear that ascending and descending and then um, here and there you can hear an arpeggio um, so stepping around a major a C major chord in this case and I'll show you that now um, so just at the beginning we hear oops, sorry about that we hear so we hear the C D E so already that's just the beginning of a scale and then um, there's another little bit in there we hear so that's all of us that's a scale right there as well starting on the C C D E F G A G all the way up to A and then back down to D. A, D. So there you can just, um, if your fingers know the pattern of a C major scale, which of course means that you're going to use your second finger on the upper strings, on the D string and the A string. So all you have to do is, um, once you have that figured out, of course you're going to use one and four and it, that means you're going to leave out the, the third finger. Um, after that, you just have to know start on C, go up to A, and then once you get to A, come back down to D. So um, there's that happens quite a bit in even smaller chunks. I'd say that's probably the longest um, portion of scalar movement in the tune, but um, you can find that elsewhere as well. And then um, you can look for little patterns, like um, off the top, we have the little scale bit, but then after that, it goes up a third from E to G, and then down a step, and then up a third from F to A, and then down a step, and then it doesn't go up a third this time, it actually goes up a fourth so we can get to the tonic, to the C, but it does step down to the B. So there's a pattern happening there, third step down, third step down, up to the tonic, and step down. And then there's a C major chord starting on a C and going back down, downwards, to the root. And the chord is actually in root position, so it goes C, G, E, C. So we hear... So let's put all that together. Thirds. And then our arpeggio going backwards from C down to C. Okay, and then we have the scale. Another scale. And here's a G major. Well, G major triad. Oh, and with the... Um, 
with the seventh in it. So it's our dominant seventh in, in the key of C. And then it steps down. And it starts again. So um, rather than thinking about this tune being um, a whole bunch of notes, one after the other, and trying to remember each one, this way we can think, um, we can group the notes into um, ideas that encompass a whole bunch at once, and then we can think, we have less to think about. So, um, yeah, so uh, probably at this point, um, that was already a lot of information. You can go back and just revisit those elements that happen in the music so that you can um, think of them, um, so you can group those notes into larger patterns that are happening and then you will have to think about less happening overall in the music. Um, okay, so that's the left hand and then in terms of the right hand I th think this is a nice opportunity to practice um, slurring three notes to a bow. So um, I think about this tune being in in nines, nine eight times, so um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So sort of in larger beats, you've got one, two, three, and each are divided into three little parts. Um, but at the very beginning, we don't actually hear, there's a silence on the first eighth note. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like so. So um, I'm going to put three notes into every bow um, except for at the very beginning, um, it's one, two, three. So I just get to play those, the second and third in the first bow, and it's going to be an up bow. Um, and then at the very end, I change bows just so that I can end on a down bow. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, or maybe it's the other way around. Let's see. to break up those last three eighth notes because I think they happen on a down bow and then you'll need to put a change to an up bow in there so you can play the last note on a down bow. So we'll see how that works out. I'll play it one more time and um, I'll play it a little bit under tempo so you can follow with me and hopefully you can see my bow so that you can, um, as you play, pay attention to when the bow moves. I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'll come on come in on eight nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this tune and I look forward to doing the next one together.